how much more gold is out there that people feel like it, they can they can get at a reasonable price, uh, uh, you know, and, and pull it because obviously the supply and demand element is a big one in terms of the pricing factor. Without a doubt, the gold price is going to hit five thousand. So, <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you believe that, if you believe that I think that, then I, you know that I wouldn't be here today. Okay. So, I would love to think the gold's going to hit five grand in, in another year, but. Um, I'm a mere geologist and I don't even try to speculate. Yeah, okay. So I, I, my question was the supply and demand element. You mentioned China's buying more um, and, and it used as an asset class, as you mentioned. But a big part of that is how much the miners actually feel is, is available for them to take out at a reasonable price, right, when we look at, at that. When you look at it from that kind of matrix of investment and geology, uh, do, you, do you get any clues as to how the price might look going forward? Okay, that, that's a, a good question. When, when you saw the, the slide that Mark put up previously that showed all the types of mineralizations, the one that we're going to test you on later, um, uh, volcanic math, massive sulfides and all that, and, uh, I'm going to test Andrew later because he's not paying attention. <laughs> um, what It just shows you how difficult it is to discover and find those projects. You have to go down sometimes several kilometers. Um, so it's all about your, your costs, cash costs to produce your ounce of gold. Um, so that's gonna create a flaw in terms of where the gold price will go eventually. Sure. Um, so I think if you look at a lot of the Aussie gold producers, um, if you take an average, I think the cash costs are getting around about $1,000 an ounce. So if you, if you see Australia is one of the major producers, we actually saw that it's not the only producer, there's another you know, the, the, unfortunately or fortunately, gold production is divided up into many different regions, so each country produces 10 or 15 percent of the world's production of the big guys, the South Africans, USA, China, Russia, Australia. But, you know, when you look at the gold um, cash cost at around about a thousand, um, you can sort of pr assume that gold will not go below a thousand for too long um, until uh, mines start shutting and, and companies start closing and and then as we always do in the market, we always overshoot and undershoot the market. So we may go down a thousand for, for a year or two and everyone's gonna cut and everyone's gonna bleed. But then what happens is there's a, the, the production stops and then before we know it, we wake up one morning and gold price is up to 1,400 or 1,500 or 5,000 and we're back to the, um, the good old days again. What are a couple of things that would be the most important for them to look at as, as amateurs, as non-professional geologists? You know, is it the reserves versus resources uh, ratio, or is it the, uh, the the cost that's involved? What, what would you suggest? Because obviously they, they can't go through the detailed analysis that you gave us uh, a short time ago. Um, the, it's, it's an interesting uh, question, Glenn, and um, in the industry, within the industry, there's a, a very, very common saying, grade is king. and um, you can have tons, you can have quality of your resource, um, and uh, if you can have both, fantastic. But uh, when it comes to gold in particular, you know, the higher grades that you're seeing, the better, you know, the more chance you, you have of the, the deposit being economic to mine. And in, in uh, parallel with that, the costs. So sometimes you can have very high grades, but you've actually got a very expensive underground mining method to, to extract those high grades. So you're looking at a combination of the quality of the gold deposit, and by quality I'm really referring to how many tonnes there might be there and what the grade is, versus how much is it going to cost that company to get that gold out because you might have a 30 gram per tonne gold deposit, which sounds really great, but if the gold deposit is this thick and it's going to cost you $500 a tonne to mine and process that, then that you really, you really wipe out most of your revenue from the, the costs associated in, in getting it out. So as an amateur, you've got to think about um, you know, what are they saying is in the ground? How are they saying they're going to extract it and process it? Is it an easy concentrating gold or a difficult concentrating gold? Uh, and, uh, and weigh up the, the, the pros and cons of, of that.